How's it going guys? Welcome back to the channel. Today we're taking a quick look at the uh, Ackhart Shirt Trail. It's about the cheapest 12 gauge 870 clone you can get on the market. It's made in Turkey. Um, costs around 300 bucks give or take. I got this one on sale 250 bucks off FOC. And uh, today we're going to take a quick little peek at it and I'll give you my thoughts. Alright, so this is the Akar Churchill. It is a clone of a Remington 870. It has dual op rod action. Very similar to the 870 bolt carrier. I'll take it apart here and show you. Um, I run 90% 3 inch federal through this. Ran flawlessly. I've had some issues with some of the cheaper ammo like the Challenger birdshot and stuff like that with the two and three quarter inch shells. Um, I think that's attributed to the design of the rim on the Challenger ammo and the way that the extractor is designed on this gun. When I take it apart I'll give you a quicker explanation on that. Um, had overall pretty good reliability out of it. It is a pump action shotgun so odds are it's going to run just about anything. Uh, I have a limb saver butt pad on here with an aftermarket uh, this is just an off brand I believe it's a one tigress just a cheap Amazon cheek pad because it does kick hard it is only a five pound shotgun so when you're running three inch shells like I do it, it's gonna beat you up this has a 12 inch barrel it has almost the same uh, functions as a 870 it uh, does have an action lock right in front of the trigger guard just like an 870 it has a very wide feed gate and the spring on this one is starting to get a little soft. When it was first brand new, it was pretty stiff. But I've worked her in, and after 800 rounds, can get those shells in there real nice. Feeds pretty well. A little bit of break-in period, but here we're going to disassemble it, and I'll show you what the wear looks like on the inside. I very lightly lube this gun. Only a little bit of hops number nine on the extractor and the op rod rails and maybe a little drop or two here and there in the receiver where the pins are and stuff but overall I run this gun pretty dry alright so we're all taken apart here as you can see it's very similar to an 870 or a CZ 612 I believe the 612 is a clone of the 870 anyway but as you can see it's very similar um, Stock interchangeability, I've read on some forums, I haven't tried to change it myself, but I understand that it is not interchangeable with Remington stocks. It has a different size screw, and I believe it's a different thread pitch as well. Um, I could look into it and maybe post in another video of how to accessorize one of these guns. But I'm pretty sure the pumps are interchangeable with any of the dual op rod stuff. You might have to do some slight modifications and just kind of dremel it out a little bit just to make it fit on here. But for the most part, I believe the pumps are interchangeable. The cap screw is just kind of a cast, like a pot metal, cheap, not really a fundamental part, but... Just be aware of that when you are threading it on and off. If you cross thread it, it will ruin the threads on this. The threads on the actual tube are very thin, but it's not really a fundamental part of the operating system of the gun. You're really only going to take that off once in a while to clean it, so I don't see it as really a huge issue. It is a cylinder bore 12 inch barrel. The barrel is a little dirty. I haven't cleaned the barrel on this thing once and I've put 800 shells through it, but 
it is a cylinder bore so I'm not too worried about it there you can see the lockup lug the barrel is fairly high quality I don't think it's like a chrome ollie or anything fancy like that it is chrome lined but I don't think it's like top of the line it is a $300 shotgun so it's not going to be anything crazy for the barrel the bolt very similar to an 870 lockup system it's got the little finger on the bottom catches on this guy here pushes this up locks into the bolt the issue that I was having with the Challenger ammo is it actually if it'll focus oh, is I got a chunk missing out of my extractor now so with that Challenger ammo it doesn't have a very prominent rim on it so it was only catching just that bottom corner of the extractor and then I had a stuck case I mortared the shotgun and I realized it chipped the extractor but with the three inch shells from Federal or the two and three quarter shells from Rio the lips are quite a bit larger they have quite a prominent lip on them so I haven't bothered changing the extractor yet it is somewhat difficult to get parts for these guns as they are a Turkish import and it's kind of hard to get part numbers because there's 10 different companies that have copied this and changed things and tweaked them a thousand times. I have not had any light strikes though, which is good. Operated through 800 shells. Um, it does occasionally do the magnum thing where the operating system will kind of pop open under recoil, but I haven't had any issues with it actually like pulling the handle out of my hand or anything like that it just kind of opens up a quarter inch like a lot of shotguns do when you shoot magnum shells through it it's just kind of the nature of things um, until you get up into like the Benelli's and stuff like that with their multi lockup systems and stuff like that it's it is what it is it works it's cheap I've shot a lot through this shot some targets it patterns very impressively for a 12 inch barrel I was getting with 15 pellet 3 inch buckshot I was getting about a 20 inch pattern at 30 yards so for a bear gun or a defense gun I would I would recommend it it it's a fairly tight pattern for only having such a short barrel and it could be attributed to to the uh, federal buckshot I know it's one of the most accurate out there especially with the flight control wads they do very well they sh they'll shoot through basically anything and have a good pattern um, as for slugs this would be great for slugs I've shot about 200 rounds of slugs through this thing and it's impressively accurate it's a little bit hard because it only has the front little dovetail sight and no rear sight but you can get aftermarket rear sights if you are going to make this primarily like a bear gun or a slug gun or something like that it's light it's easy to strap onto a pack it's got two sling mounts if you just need a backup or something if you're in grizzly country or whatever i I'd, I'd use it um but yeah, for the most part, that's as deep as I can really get into a shotgun. That's how it works, and I would recommend it for the price. You can't really go wrong. 300 bucks is, in this economy, it's basically you're going to only get 22s for that price. Even some 22s are almost $1,000 now. Um, this is made of pretty high-quality polymer. Stock is polymer. Uh triggers I don't know if they make aftermarket triggers I'm sure you could find some out there somewhere I'm sure somebody does um, it has a pretty nice uh, a pretty nice ejection port sorry and uh, all the controls are pretty high quality I've dropped this thing a couple times the finish on it's pretty good 
you can see a little bit of wear here just from the pump going back and forth but that's the only real scratches and stuff I'm not really easy on my guns if you've seen my N10 if you've seen my M10X sorry it's uh it's fairly beat up I've only had it for a year or two and the finish is pretty scratched and beat up on it I'm not nice to my guns and this thing runs pretty good all right well if you like the video if you have any questions leave them in the comments shoot me a like subscribe the M10X video is still coming. I just got to find a new place to shoot. The guy that I was shooting with ended up selling the property where I was shooting. So the M10X accuracy video is still coming. I just got to find a nice range that I can go to that doesn't charge you an arm and a leg for a membership. See you guys later.